Hi, welcome back. As you can see, it's rather a wet day, so what better way to spend it than talking about astronomy equipment. Today, I want to talk to you about my telescope. So the APM 107-700 is a short tube refractor. It's f6.5 native, and it's a triplet airspace. What that means is that it's got three lenses and it's color corrected. In practice, I find I get very little coma or color fringing for either visual or for astro imaging. The scope itself is made in Germany, although I think that the glass itself comes from Russia, and it's got this lovely solid lens cell at the front, which really looks a business. I bought my scope from Astrograph in London in 2015, and I paid about £1,800 from it. Astrograph were very good to deal with, both pre-sales before I bought the scope, giving plenty of advice. I use the scope for visual as well as imaging. I've got a CDS Pro 2 modded cooled camera which I got from South Korea. That works pretty well. I'll be upgrading that soon I'm sure. For visual the scope gives lovely bright images. It gives excellent contrast both for planetary and for lunar and I've tended to use it mainly for imaging. The scope came with the three inch starlight focuser which is very solid and has got a nice feel to it. I do find though that there's quite a bit of backlash in the focuser and sometimes I wish that I had upgraded it to the moonlight focuser. The scope came with an electric focuser from Celatec. You can see it here. I've had mixed uses with it. I find it most useful for being able to control the focuser remotely when I'm sat at my laptop and I don't have to stand up and sit down and contort to get the focus. I do tend to focus with a Bartonoff mask and again remotely controlling the focuser is really easy to use. I have tried the autofocus routine in SG Pro but only with limited results. I tend to find that it puts it a bit out of focus compared to where the Bartonoff mask was and I would say that I don't find the focus changes much during the evening because the scope is colour corrected being a triplet and I'm using a colour camera with it. So for astro imaging the scope has given me lovely results. It's quite good for wide field, which is what I mainly use it for. I do like imaging galaxies and nebulas. And I would say that when I bought the telescope, I actually bought the Massimo Riccardi Focal Reducer. It's a 0.75 reducer. So what that means is that it reduces my scope from being an f6.5 down to an f4.9, which makes it very fast. So the scope then becomes a 107, 525. As I said, it's an f4.9 when I use the focal reducer, which means that it's very good for nights when there's a lot of cloud about and you have to grab whatever conditions you can find, which is common here in the British Isles. If you look at my scope, you can see it's a bit unusual because I've actually got it mounted in this red cage. I like going to star parties, so I wanted my mount to be portable, and it's kind of getting to the size where it would be less portable given all the equipment that's strapped onto it and I was getting fed up of having to take everything off and mount it back on again every time I went away. So I had this cage made. I had it made by Darren Hall from ATB Custom Made Astronomy and they're based over in Cambridgeshire here in the UK. Darren milled the slots down the side of the cage, it's all made out of aluminium and it's finished off in this lovely anodized red finish and I've been very happy with it. It's certainly made it easier to pack up and travel around to star parties with. So I use the cage to keep my cabling tidy. You can see that I've got a transformer which takes the mains 240 volts power here in the UK down to a 12 volt which I feed into this rig runner. I've got the rig runner 4005 horizontal unit so this uses Anderson power pole connectors which standardizes all my 12 volt connections and makes them nice and secure. Once again, when you're with a bird's nest of cables, it's very hard to stop having a disconnect and using the cage and the good cable management stops my cables snagging. I've got a red dot finder mounted on top of the scope. So that's quite useful if I'm doing some quick images of the moon. But in practice, I don't really use it that much because I use Plate Solving Software Pro from Main Sequence Software, which does all my image management, helps with the autofocus, not that I use that too much. SG Pro takes a bit of getting used to, but once you've got the hang of it, it's really a very efficient capture and management software. The guide scope that I use is actually the finder scope from my original Skywatcher ED80. It's an 80 by 50 scope, 
and I've been tempted to upgrade it, but actually it works very, very, very well. You can see on the back, I use a guide camera, use a ZWO 120M monochrome camera for guiding, and I connect that to PHD2 software. So I find that very effective. So would I recommend the scope? Yes, definitely. It's a very nice feel to it. it. Comes with a nice solid focuser, as I've said. I find the views are spectacular when using it visually. Really good on the moon, very good on the planets and looking at some of the galaxies. It gives very good contrast. For astro imaging, I've also had great results. It's a fast refractor, which makes it ideally suited for imaging, particularly when I use the focal reducer, which brings it down to a 4.9, so super fast. It's very solid and it's not too heavy, which means it's portable, which is great for taking to star parties. If you've enjoyed this review, consider leaving a like and subscribing to my channel. Hopefully next time we meet, it will have been much drier and we'll have had some clear skies and I can talk about some practical astronomy that I've been doing.